Hi, uh, my name is Xavier Faure, and I'm here to present the work that we have done with my two colleagues, Tim Johansson and Alexi Pozichny uh, from KTH. And it's about urban building energy modeling and um, how um, the level of detail, shadowing, and thermal learning are important in R&R at the district scale. So first of all, as an introduction, everybody knows the one served rice here, which represents the building sector final energy use worldwide. And it's more or less the same for the overall related emissions. Um, so it's a well-known ratio since many times now. And um, even though we have done quite some work on the building efficiency, as you can see here from this graph taken from the IEA uh, report 2019, um, it showed the energy, the changes in energy intensity per floor area uh, since 2010 to 2018 on uh, for the different sources of consumption. So except for space cooling that is increased due to the increasing demand of it, all has quite decreased. And this is thanks to code and standard, I would say, and, uh, and awareness of uh, building efficiencies improvement that are needed. Uh, but in the meantime, um, the floor area has increased a lot as well, and is increasing more than the energy efficiencies has um, increased. Thus, the final energy um, still increased in the building sector. So uh, we need to change maybe some paradigm or, or new tools are needed here to increase again the, past, the pace of uh, energy transition. And so the last 10 years, approximately, we have seen um, a new paradigm of UBIM uh, that are coming up. So UBIM is about urban building energy modeling, and it's uh, about making automatic building energy modeling at the urban scale. It has to deal with a lot more uncertainty than the building scale, because it is true that if you are scaling up your, your point of view, um, you lower down the knowledge of uh, each input required for the building energy model. Uh, but uh, still, the scaling up is, is truly needed and it needs to address um, uh, several uh, uh, targets, just as trying to catch the impact of system design for new urban areas and enable to compute energy needs, carbon footprints, uh, in, in confronted to the investment that are required for it. Same aspect for energy conversion measure at the large scale. Uh, what would be the best for this entire built area? Uh, but also to address optimization of operation and energy system and demand response analysis. So um, this uh, needs to have a different view on the district scale or large district scale and enables to make a simulation approach. So making each a building model communicate with each other in order to uh, see the overall um, uh, district energy efficiency uh, strategy. Uh, so since we haven't seen um, one UBeam platform that offers uh, all this option, we have built our own at KTH, and uh, it's based on freely available engine. So it's fully open source, it's based on Python and Energy Plus. So we can do large samplings of buildings uh, simulation and taking advantage of parallel computing uh, to address the ECM's impact on large built areas to address newly designed urban areas and also to make probabilistic simulation or calibration. Uh, we will have a, a word after this on, on after afterward on this uh, specific probabilistic approach for UBeams. And the nice feature um, of it is that it enables as well, thanks to just keywords, to build automatically FMUs for each building that you have on your input files. And um, so it's based on functional mockup interface that enables to uh, uh, communicate with each uh, functional mockup unit, FMU. Um, so each, each, each building, but it can also be the district heating system models that is an FMU, then the master algorithm just um, dialogue with each FMUs and can compute cert algorithm in order to drive them. Uh, uh, so this is pretty mandatory to make demand response analysis and operation at the of energy system at the district scale. Uh, the uncertainties now um, and, and the uncertainty, the unknown parameters on UBIM are not the very first assumption to me because uh, unknown parameters are part of the paradigm of, of making UBIM. Uh, so it, it relies uh, mainly on probabilistic um, approach. Um, the lack of available parameter is 
kind of compensate by making a bunch of simulation and taking each unknown inputs as a probabilistic input within a range of expected values for it. And then you can have um, the output simulation output is also a distribution. So uh, the idea is to lower down as much as possible this um, uh, distribution wideness. And it can be done thanks to calibration. But again, here following a kind of Bayesian approach and making uh, the outcome of calibration will be a multivariate joint calibrated distribution of all the inputs, uh, the unknown inputs here. So, and the platform is built in, in this idea of, of making this possible with quite a few uh, keywords and, and impact from the model, but still required intensive uh, uh, computational capacities as well, for, for sure. Well, the very first um, assumptions uh, here, uh, it's it's basic assumption, I would say, for anyone had had who had been confronted to building energy modeling. It's about the level of detail of the building geometry, uh, the thermal zoning resolution, and the impact of the my surrounding buildings uh, on the shadow effect of the, of the surroundings. So, first of all, the level of details here. We have taken the definition from Bilgeki, um, 2016. So. Uh, it's illustrated pretty much clearly here. You have a solidite view of the building. So you have several blocks. The yellow day 1.3 enables to take into account the different blocks, even though uh, still some uh, threshold uh, is taking into account into the, the, the resolution, spatial resolution. We do not take into account one story difference. And the one that Two, basically, at the footprint that is extruded up to the height of the building, and generally the height is the highest one uh, of the block. So the shape factor will be definitely quite largely impacted by this uh, difference between one then two and what the three. But here again, at the district scale, what dif difference does it make finally? Uh, time at zoning resolution. So again, um, everybody who has been consulted to building energy modeling ask himself what 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 resolution should I take? So the UBIM platform enables um, anyone to make these four kind of uh, a time at zoning resolution. So from quite coarse heated zone and non heated zone uh, zone uh, meshing up to core and perimeter for each floor. So again, you have two examples here. You can play on the parameter desk and it will compute automatically uh, uh, the good perimeter and parameter, good core and perimeter zone that matches with the building geometry. Um, again, even though you might have more precise results uh, with high resolution, uh, it will require quite intensive computational uh, capacities um, and for what difference at the district scale. And the last, the surrounding shadowing environment is about um, a keyword that uh, takes into account the distant threshold. And basically below this threshold, all the surfaces from the building are, are taken and are constricted as shadowing environment. Um, and so the more um, this distant threshold is, uh, the more external surface you take into account. Again, what difference does it make at the district scale and for what distance threshold? So we have uh, tried to answer these uh, three questions here for this three element for two districts in Stockholm, Minneberg with uh, three, 33 buildings in Hammarby. Um, this is the uh, representation of a um, full Hammarby district, but we have considered only 45 buildings which are around here. Uh, so for this two, we have gathered the 3D uh, city model um, to build either the LOD 1.2 and 1.3 models. Uh, of course, the energy performance certificate, the building register, property register, and climate data. Uh, so quantitative effect, uh, we have computed for the three of them the maximum effect at the building scale. So always compared uh, on the uh, heating needs, uh, the building heating needs, and on the district scale, so an aggregation of all the results of the different building within the district. And what we can see that for the level of detail, even though one building could have up to 30% of difference, the entire district for these two is less than, well, is around 1% of difference. Um, for the thermal zoning, even though for one building it can be up to 10%, at the district scale, it's still around 2%. 
And for the surrounding shadowing environment, even though for one building you can get up to 15%, uh, it is still up to 12% uh, for the district scale. Uh, here we have computed these um, differences, taking account the 150 uh, meter at the distance threshold as above this one, no different where really caught from, from, from the heating needs. So what would be our qualitative now analysis, so kind of recommendation for this three? Uh, we will still recommend the LOD 1.3, not because the discrepancy was big, because it was not, but in order to catch uh, the ECM savings, uh, uh quite um, uh, with real, real with being confident on the result uh the lod one does be as it have different as it has an impact on the shading shape factor uh we still recommend to 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 try to catch this one if it's possible from your input file um thermal zoning resolution so we still recommend floor, floor resolution as if you model urban area, you, you will be confronted to buildings with different types of occupancy. And generally, the first one is for office or shops or stores, and the upper one are for residential. And the floor resolution enables you to really make different in the HVAC system, ventilation rate, uh, internal load that are way different from residential and non-residential occupancy types. And for the surrounding shadowing environment, uh, we would recommend 150 meter and more. Of course, it also depends on your surrounding building's height because it is very true that if you have, if you have high rise tower, this distance would be increased. And if you have single family, family house, it might be uh, decreased. Um, so that's about all. I, I, for any question, I recommend you to look through the paper and, of course, to go to the GitHub and have a try on the platform. You can download it and clone it and have fun with it. Thank you.